Here's the video on, and it is hello, hello everybody! Back with another stream, another Saturday, what is it, Saturday, Sunday? Yes, Saturday stream! <laughs> Just gotta make sure. But yes, today we are playing Avian Attorney. This is one that at the very top of my Steam list, I was, I was so excited to play it, freaking... Uh, as a CRJ major, not that any of you would know that, um, I was just so hyped to play this. I definitely want to play Ace Attorney in the future as well. And then there's a couple other attorney-like games and investigation games that I'm kind of excited to play. But this will be, I guess, the start of that kind of genre. But yeah, so technically, I guess we are just going to be attorneys for different kinds of animals. There's a little bunny and such. Um, uh, the freaking thumbnail kind of took forever, <laughs> surprisingly. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy with the bunny, the way that it came out. I had to, like, snip, like, two different characters together, erase a whole other character to get that background. But it's fine. It's fine. But yes, let's jump into it and see what this adventure takes us. I hope my dog doesn't wind through this entire thing because that'd be so sad for me. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, they want it. The dog will play with us. Okay. Just know that he's in my lap. Oh, right. I gotta turn off the actual Ace Attorney music and get started. January 1st, 1888. Hello, what are we doing? Uh, I don't speak French. A barn of ghoul. Is that the courthouse? Frog. <gasps> the frog died. You killed the one bisexual. <laughs> is that Monsieur Guerin? On the mall. Oh, I hope this all isn't in French. That sucks. Deme Cartanelli. What have you done? Is that another bunny? I never were ruthless, but how dare they? A cat with claws. Oh, okay, it's a cat. It's me, I think. I think I'm a falcon. I think that's what they said. Maybe a blue jay, I don't know. Oh, sparrowson. Maybe, I'm a sparrow. It's midday already. Where on earth is that feather head? Is that a hawk? I don't know. Well, 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 look who finally decided to get up. Haven't heard from you and what they say about the early bird falcon. Okay, it is falcon. I know, I know. <laughs> Bougie stuff, the dog. How dare they? Oh well, they'll just hopefully be calm in my lap. Uh, too early for the worms. Past the carbonate silver drone. I can't freaking read half the words that they're probably gonna say because it's all fresh. <laughs> Please don't bark at me. <laughs> I'll put you in freaking jail too. But there'll be a time for that later. We've got some business to handle first. Business? A letter arrived while you were sleeping. I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> It's probably just more junk mail. Go ahead, Sparrison. You may have the horn honors. Ah, I could read. Dear Monsieur Falcon, I'm writing you today because my daughter, Deme Carlton, has been arrested for a crime she did not commit. Girl, she was on the top of the freaking staircase, but <laughs> the dead frog. Little, little bit sus. She's being held at La Concierge Prison on the charge of murder, no less. Her trial is in three days' time. I'd be greatly in your debt if you'd offer her your legal aid. Yours sincerely, Senor Petitur, de Mero of the de Menera estate. I'm gonna butcher all these words. No! I can, it's hard enough for me to say Lady Dimitrescu. Limitrescu. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm not gonna be able to do this. Well, that's quite something. I know. Your first serious client in months. No, not just that. The... Demayo estate is well known for its exuberant wealth. Even if we cannot do much for the Demayo Claritin, his lordship would still reward us handsomely for our efforts. As an attorney does. Wow, so I suppose you intend on defending Demayo Carlton in court? Mmm. I don't know about that one, Chief. Mmm, <laughs> I don't know if we should take that. Caterlin. Oh, okay, Caterlin. Cat, Caterlin, Caterlin. We'll say Caterlin. I think we're gonna get the nope on this one. <laughs> I think not, Sparrow. The fate of fat cat bourgeoisies is none of my concern. 
past the carbonet. So we're just trying to... So am I this falcon? I thought I was going to be this little sparrow bird. Back. What? With all respect, falcon, we've been doing nothing for the past two weeks. Anything would be better than another day of thumb twiddling. Still. Come on, let's be productive members of society. I don't think being productive members of society is protecting a murder, but... <sighs> no, but can I defend the other people? Well, I guess it would just be the state that I'm defending. Maybe it wasn't her. Well, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Uh... <laughs> Alright, you've twisted my arm. Let's ho head to the la concierge and meet the our client. Excellent. My derriere was getting tired of all this sitting around. Oh, but I better file away Singier de Mera's letter first. One moment, Falcon. Oh, this is going to be so difficult to go through. <laughs> Pertier's letter has been added to your evidence folder. You may access the evidence folder at any time by clicking the suitcase symbol. Ah, nearly forgot my wallet. I wouldn't want to lose that. Haha, <laughs> I feel like we are going to lose that in the future. Again, I recall you losing it in the New York's party. And at Christmas. And probably soon. Alright, no need to make a list. Falcon has picked up his wallet. <laughs> you may see how much money he is carrying at any time by clicking on the wallet symbol. Let's make a move. How rich am I? I wanna know. January 3rd, Monday. Welcome to the map screen. From here you can travel to any listed area by clicking the location and name or location node. Areas marked with a clock symbol may take a whole day to visit. Areas with no symbol can be visited freely. Okay, perfect. Uh, I mean, I guess we gotta go here. For centuries, the infamous Congiri prison has detained the accused and the condemned alike. Okay. It's gonna take a whole day trip. Falcon and Sparrow step into the stone-cold foyer for Congiri prison. Let's see how rich I am. I only have 20! Twenty dollars and I'm an attorney with this fancy freaking getup. <laughs> I don't think so. Also, I look kind of like a detective with this hat, not a freaking attorney. But oh well, we'll, we'll just kind of skip past that. Same same group, I guess. Uh, Solon faced guards and visitors linger beneath the medieval air archways. Ah, the Congiri. They say this is the finest prison in the whole fr whole of France. The outer walls are impenetrable. The cells are spotless. The guards are well mannered. I, uh, crow. <laughs> what do you want? Croc. Good day, Mazur. I'm here to see Dame Carlton. Uh, that's how you said it, right? Kate, Caterlin. <laughs> Caterlin Damayo. I am due to represent her in court. Oh, you're her lawyer, huh? Fine, fine. Follow me. I don't know if I should give these people voices. Well, what are you waiting for? Keep up. I don't have the access to follow you, man. <laughs> She does a pretty good day. Sigh. <laughs> My papa hasn't forgotten about me, has he? No, he has not. I shall help you pronounce the names. Thank you so much. <laughs> Did you take French in high school? Cause I didn't. I don't. I don't know what you took. Or maybe you just passed like the Spanish thing. Whatever. You got a trip, but uh, Demi Carlton. Carriage. What did you say, Caterlin? <laughs> I presume. I'm not even going to try the last name anymore. You've arrived, the fantastic lawyer, Monsieur Falcon, and his petite assistant, Spiroson. Milady is knowledgeable. Don't talk like that, Spiroton. Sorry. My papa told me he would only hire the best lawyers in town. You... I was going to say... That's okay, I can say it. You damn right, I can say that word. Yeah, that's fine, it's not that bad. I'm flattered. But they weren't available at such short notice. He hired the first people in the address... <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I mean, probably true, but still. <laughs> oh. I'm so offended. <laughs> you see, Falcon, I knew I shouldn't have freaking represented you. <laughs> I told you listing under the AV attorney would pay off. Let's go down to business. Let's get down to business. Dame Carrollton, could you fill us in on some details? Your father's letter was br a little brief. I can do my best. What did you want to know? Uh... I guess. Okay, you know what? Dog down. <laughs> Just don't make noise. Did you see anything suspicious? I guess we'll start with that. Then Mike Carlton. Did you see anything suspicious that evening? Suspicious? Like uh, maybe a guy lurking in the shadows or a bloodied murder weapon? Bodied. <laughs> Monsieur Falcon, I believe you're looking for an easy answer. 
I am. <laughs> you got me. I didn't see anything, I'm afraid. The evening was very normal. The food was delicious. The conversation was boring. Typical. <laughs> I was all very ordinary until the incident. So nothing suspicious, but you did see a dead frog stabbed in the heart. Okay. Wait, Falcon, you missed something of huge importance. I didn't finish asking questions. I did? Damakeraton, you said the food was delicious. But you didn't say what food it was. Okay. <laughs> you and your damn stomach. Let me see. We had poached red herring to start garnished with garlic butter. Okay, first off. It looks a little kind of close to a frog, I guess. I'm you're not seeming any less suspicious that you possibly wanted to eat them, but I'll I'll continue. Go on. Then marbled steak, savored perfectly, bloody rare. Okay, so this is gonna be a B stars moment. <laughs> Glorious Falcon, write write this down. What? This can't possibly be relevant to the case. Okay, you know what? The dog is gonna go out. <laughs> One moment. The dog stole my croaking. I'm so sad. <laughs> my plushes. Stop eating my plushes! No! <laughs> you have so many toys. They're going after my pseudo budo. <laughs> Write it down, please, for me. Fine, fine. Red herring has been added to your evidence folder. Why would that. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> A bloody rare steak has been added to your evidence folder. This person, remind me not to let you talk to clients on an empty stomach. Come to think of it, I did find it a little strange that we weren't given any cutlery. No cutlery? Even for the steak? Nope. You would think that the great Baron of Chateau <laughs> would have glorious silverware, but there is none to be seen. Ah, oh, so you did take French. <laughs> That's a little particular. Yes, that it is a pun. I did um, the red herring of like elephant in the room kind of pun. Yeah, I noticed that, but <laughs> this is a little particular. Was there anything else you wanted to know, Monsieur Falcon? Um, I guess we'll ask the more most basic one. What exactly happened on the night of the murder? Starting off open-ended. I guess not starting off. Kind of middle open-ended. Ooh, let me think. It was Friday evening. Me and my papa had arrived at the Shonsho Shoshoshe, <laughs> the home of the great Baron Brugier. I'm not trying to be... I'm not trying to sound bad, but... I just can't, <laughs> can't pronounce it. My papa has spent all evening talking with Monsieur Guenet and the Baron about it. Business stuff. Business stuff? Well, the three of them of, uh, own a railway company together. So all through dinner, they were talking about it, company shares and investments. But I did really, didn't really understand most of it. But after dinner, this man with the camera took our photograph. That was a lot more fun. Sorry, man with, what? Took your what? Camera, it's a very new gadget. A tiny bug sits in the box with a tiny paintbrush and paints your picture very fast. I forgot how old we are back in the centuries. In ten minutes, poof, you have a perfect picture. Wow, technology is amazing. I don't think the lady's explanation is right, Sparrowson. I skipped over that. <laughs> Still, the camera sounds like a very special device. I'll take note of it. Camera has been added to the evidence folder. Please continue, Damaya Carrollton. So after we had the photograph, we went into the gardens to get some air, and that's when I found the body of Monsieur Guenet. He was all ripped open. Well, not too much ripped open. Tis a stab room. A housemaid saw me standing over the froggy Monsieur and called for help, and then the police arrived. Before I could say anything, I ended up here. It was such a blur. It must have been terrifying. It wasn't so bad. My papa taught me how to be a brave cat. Curiosity killed the cat, man. You're, mm, I don't have high hopes for you. <laughs> there was something else that you wanted to ask Monsieur Falcon? Yes. Who was there that evening? The Mike Hilton. Who attended the banquet that evening? Well, there was me, my papa, my dearest madame, couldn't make it. And there was Baron, who hosted the dinner, and his housemaid, Colton. Cal, Cal, Caline. <laughs> I think she was called. You know better than I do. Of course there is Monsieur Guenet. Well, until, you know, he died. And there is Monsieur... <laughs> the man with the camera. Oh, the bug. But he was only there for a little while. Chateau. 
Chateau. <laughs> hmm, I think that's all. There was anything else you wanted to ask? No, I think that will be all. So what's the plan now, Falcon? The way I see it, we have two tasks. We should head to the chateau and try to see if there's a scene of the murder ourselves. And we should try to track down this cis-voted photographer, Monsieur Robito. The two days for two tasks seems doable. Uh, <laughs> but we should get, head back and get some rest. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Isn't it take an entire day just to go somewhere? How am I supposed to do this in two days? Wait, Monsieur Falcon, before you go, you do believe my story, don't you? Not exactly, but I believe in justice. Demaya Curtin, I believe that this fair trial can draw the truth from any situation. I believe in justice. That's good to hear. Yes. <laughs> You're not wrong, Falcon, but that's not what the leader needed to hear. Uh, that's the truth, though. You might want to work on being <laughs> less of a, how to put it, Felice de Put. Okay, how, what, what does this mean? Translation? <laughs> These people have animal pun names. Yes, I love it. Except for Falcon. Falcon is just like so out there, just plain. If I'm serving justice makes me Felice de Put, then I'll wear the title proudly. Coffee! Demaya Carrollton. They have Starbucks here. <laughs> Demaya Carrollton, Monsieur Guenet, Baron Regal. These names are all getting a bit confusing, aren't they? Yes! Yes, they are. <laughs> Not particularly. For you. Well, I guess for me. I am you. Well, it is for me. I'm going to start compiling a Facebook so that way we can keep track of everybody who is. A what? A Facebook. It's a collection of people's names, pictures, and descriptions. It's one easy to carry along catalog. I think I understand. The name could be used a little work though. Well, that's a great name. Spurson has started a compiling a Facebook. Haha, -ha, is it blue? And you can access the list of people who have met at any time by clicking that button symbol. Thank you. Let's make a move. Um, da -da -da -da. See, it's a whole new day. How am I supposed to do this in two days? This game saves automatically at the start of each new day. Good. But you can also make a quick save at any time by selecting save and quit from the pause menu. You can access the pause menu by clicking the clog symbol in the upper left corner or by pressing the escape key. Okay, he has the Rosalina now. Oh my god! You know what sucks too? Literally has two other stuffed animals. Specifically dog toys. Just for him. Stop eating the stuffed animals! Okay, you know what? You're going out of the room. I'm getting kicked out. You're getting put in jail. <laughs> Until he eventually starts winning, inevitably. You can access the pause menu by clicking the- I think I already said this. <laughs> Uh, probably, mm. Okay. Because we already went there, so it no longer takes a day. That's nice. I don't know where to go. <laughs> uh, the Baron lives there. I don't think... Maybe the photographer, like, took a picture of something more suspicious. <clears throat> so this is... Oh, no, you and I, they have to draw it, though. Oh, I guess that wouldn't make... It's a, it's a video game. I'm sure the logic is there. So, is this the studio of the famous photographer? Shall we knock? Wait, there's a note on the door. <laughs> the magnificent and marvelous artist of Monsieur Roberto de Roberto is currently out of the uh, out on an arti artistic expedition. Dude, that sucks because we just came here on a up day. He shall return when his muse sees fit, bro. <laughs> when his muse sees fit? What does that even mean? Track him down. I think it means that he's a pretentious bird brain, but in any case, the artist must seems to be out. What shall we do now? Hmm. Uh, no, we're gonna freaking knock anyway. We spent a whole day getting here. We should knock anyway. All right, I don't see the harm. Maybe he has a housemate. Nope, doesn't seem like he's in Falcon. Uh, I don't want to break in, cause that's that's against. 
if you find evidence, you're not allowed to present that in court. And I don't know how accurate the game's gonna be if we don't have a freaking order to be going in to collect evidence. <laughs> nothing else. Let's do. Ooh, let's make a move. Ugh, I hate the feeling of a wasted trip. There's really nothing else we can do. No. <laughs> We're gonna respect the note. We can't just ignore this note, Sparrowton, if you say so. We'll just have to come back later, if there's still time. Right. I hope that didn't- No, it wasted an entire day. I'm so mad. I didn't want to do it, though. Whatever. Let's get in a new place. Mm -hmm. Falcon and Sparrowson enter the courtyard outside of the chateau. People with the dirty clothes and the gaunt faces linger around the building's shadows. Oh, to the scene of the crime. Pull Phoenix right. No! <laughs> Absolutely not! <laughs> I'm not breaking in. Excuse me, Monsieurs. I didn't mean to pay be a pain, but my little girl and I are stick and sick and starving, you see. Cough, cough. <laughs> Gumblade. Gumbade. Gumbade. <laughs> and Swatane. Uh, I'm not gonna remember either of your names. I don't suppose you'd have any spare change. You have 20 francis in your wallet. What will you do? Mm, I'll give you one. Here you go. Stay safe, madame. I am sure you'll help us later. Thank you, monsieurs. That was pretty generous of you, Falcon. Times are tough. Making sure the mother and child have something to eat is the least I can do. But what am I gonna do standing here moralizing? Come on, Sparrowson. We got some business to attend to. Falcon and Spirison step into the pristine wood paneled foyer of the chantel. Whoa, look at this place. Baron Rosario must be loaded. Yeah, I'd assume so, isn't he the one that hosted? More than loaded, it comes to a lucrative investments. The Baron is a legend. Factories, chocolate shops, hotels, railroads, the Baron owns a little bit of everything on this side of the Cine. Is he here right now? He better be. <laughs> yes. Look at the smug looking chap with the impressive mane. Oh, is it the lion? I saw that in the uh, prequel things, whatever it's called. But we must approach the man of his statue with the tact and finesse. Hey, Baratin, we like a word. That's subtle. <laughs> Don't be suspicious. How's that? Spirison, you have finesse in and of an embroidered warthog. You can thank me later. I think I got his attention. You know, being dyslexic doesn't help that freaking trying to read these words are not helping. Did I hear my name? Great Baron. Property, eh, property over extraordinaire. At your service. He's very cool. I like his mane. I like his hat. He has a monocle. Oh, you're just amazing. <laughs> you're probably such a dick, but <laughs> I love you already. And who might you fellows be? More investigators? More? No, we're attorneys. Not quite. I'm a private attorney, J.J. Falcon, and this is my associate, Sparrowton. Lawyers, eh? You know, we aren't the first to have passed through here today. Oh? Yes, yes. This jumpity, twitchity fellow came by this morning. It was the freaking... whatever it's called? Oh, no, 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 that wouldn't have been the bug. I don't think so. Asked a bunch of questions, then hopped away before he heard the answers. Most curious. Hmm. Do you know who he is, Sparrowton? Perhaps. I have a hunch. Sorry, hunch. We've been seeing him at the trial. A friend of yours? Something like that. So what may I do for you, Monsieurs? We're doing some research. The Monsieur Glenare, the frog, was killed here Friday evening. Of course, of course. Such a tragedy. He was a good friend and a loyal business partner. I suppose you Monsieurs will be wanting to see the crime scene for yourself? Actually, yes. That would be fantastic. Well, be my guest. You'll find the garden where the murder occurred through the back doors. You may also be interested in the lounge in the second floor, third door to the right. That'd be worthy we gathered for the group photograph. Part of the... <clears throat> I'm guessing murder. Why don't you... You blew that in my face! Unfortunate incident. Okay, can we see the finished photograph? I'm afraid not. It's to my understanding that the photograph must be developed before it can be viewed. It's a slow process. Boy, that was drawn! What do you mean developed? My own copy of the photograph is to be delivered in three days' time. Okay, so go back in three days. That's no good to us. The trial will be over by then. Nonetheless, we appreciate your hospitality. Thank you, Baron. It's no trouble at all. I'll be here to see you 
out when you're all done with your investigations. Thank you. So shall we? So where shall we go first? Mm -hmm. I get no. Yes. <laughs> like, should we start where the people were? So, like, I feel like I'm gonna like miss a certain detail if I like go to the garden straight away. I, I don't know. I guess you know what? We'll go to the garden. Screw it. Demay Clariton has said that she found Monsieur Gwinnerin. Should I? Okay, let me read this right. Grin, Grinwe, Grinwe. Okay. Cat or lion is lying. I figured one of them were. <laughs> Grinwe is the, but on the stairs by the fountain. So this must be a very must be the very spot where the murder took place. I think it took place up here by the stairs. Hey Falcon, do the crime scene investigation thing. Is crime the crime scene investigation thing? Yeah, you know, the thing where you get all eagle-eyed and analyze every object in excruciating detail. Falcons have very great vision. They have better vision than we do. And you mean search for the evidence? Yeah, do that. That's not a bad suggestion. It wouldn't be the first time Paris and police have missed something right under their nose. The investigation mode, you are free to examine the scenery of the room. Click on an item of interest and the Falcon will examine it in closer detail. When you have had an next. When you've had enough, you can find nothing else to examine. Click X on the top right of the corner. Select an area to examine. Ah, uh, the stairs. It's where... Uh, dried blood on the staircase. This must be where Monsieur Gwynne... Grinwe... Again, Grinwe died. Do you see any bloody footprints? Ooh, ooh, or maybe a name scrolled in blood written on the frog's last breath. I doubt that. Wishful thinking. All I'm seeing here is a big, sticky puddle. There is nothing to indicate that the body was moved or that the frog left last minute clue. So they're just leaving, I guess. Would you clean up the blood? I feel like you'd clean up the blood of the crime scene by now. It's been like, well, I guess it's only been two days. I don't know how long they'd leave it there. All I can make out from this bloody mess is the Monsieur Grinby was attacked and killed by the, on the staircase. Select an area to examine. Like this fountain. This fountain is finely crafted, solid, carved marble. Can't have been cheap. I see nothing but water in the bottom of the lower basin. It's a shame we can't see inside the upper basin from here. That would be a perfect place to quickly stash a murder weapon. That's actually not a terrible idea of reasoning. We ought to wait out the closer look, just to be sure. Yeah, I suppose, mm, I suppose we should. Oh, I apologized. I wasn't being direct enough. What I mean to say was, Spearson, go wait into the fountain and take a closer look inside of the upper basin. I figured I was going to send him. <laughs> Me? No way. If you want to go waiting, do it yourself. I am taller. I am respectable lawyer. You can't expect me to roll up my trousers and paddle through the fountain like a duck in the lake. You are no true Sherlock Holmes, sir. <laughs> do better. Yeah, well, you don't pay me enough to justify getting out of my sweet threads, but you... Good for you, Sparrison. Know your place. Look, there's only one reasonable way to stop this. You flip for it. Flip for it? Yep, flip for this frantic coin. You called the outcome, get it wrong, and you go for a swim. So what it'll be? Heads, tails, Neapolitan face, or plant squiggles? Uh, I like to go tails. Plant squiggles? It's called the wreath spiritin. Sure, I'll bet on the plant squiggles. Here we go. It's heads. Should have gone with the old Emperor Falcon. Gah, fine. Hold my shoes. I'm glad it's me. I like spiritin. We're better. Or, Seraton's better. I guess not we. I'm Falcon. <gasps> yeah, I just realized this. That's kind of cool. Falcon really should have learned how to spot a rigged coin flip. You rigged it? <laughs> Almost feel bad for cheating. You should. Almost. No, I guess you shouldn't. Ah, you're back. Had a good swim? You don't get paid for, uh, for it. It's okay. <laughs> no, I'm a bird, not a fish. Are you sure about that? But I did find a mystery item on the upper basin. It's no mortar weapon, though. Is that a bullet? What is this? A brown and sticky... It smells weird. Don't tell me. It's You picked up a very wet cigar butt? Possibly belonging to Baron? Correct. But it, that shouldn't be too surprising. It's his house after all. Why is it up there, though? What the heck? I'll stash it in the evidence folder, just in case. Cigar butt has been added to your evidence folder. Is there anything else we need to do here? Likely. Yes! Cool. Check out the cool statue. A horse statue. One has a goofy face. 
This reminds me of a joke. The horse walks into the bar, and the barkeep says, Why the long face? Yes, we've all heard that one. But, no, the barkeep says, You gotta stop coming in here. You're drinking us under the stable. Love that. <laughs> I, I think it's time to rein in the horse jokes. As you do another. Um, I guess regular horse statue. Another beautifully made horse statue. You know, my uncle had one of those horse statues that refused to eat any hay. Or, uh, had a horse. <laughs> Not a statue. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yep, eventually we realized it was just filling up on horse devours. Devours? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. But okay. Anything else other than that? Okay, I guess two. Baron certainly likes his horse statues, as he should. I don't mind the horse statues, but a little cherub people creep me out. Baby should be wet waddling, not attempting to settle his horseback riding. Well said. Such an area to examine. There was one house that I went to as a kid at my friend's house, and they just had like angel baby pictures everywhere, and I was just like, I was a little bit weirded out, but I was just like, okay, you know what? Stylistic choice, I guess. <laughs> That's fine. They did have a really cool koi, koi pond in the back, so I was like, you know what? I, your house has its ups and downs, I guess. <laughs> Never went back there. But yeah, finely crafted horse statue. That mane almost looks half alike. Would you say it behooves you to stroke it? No, no, I would not. This guy looks like an equius. Or not looks like an Echoist, acts like an Echoist, all the freaking horse statues. Okay. Uh, that's that. I think we're done here. Good call, but are you sure you don't want to make another dip? We still have time. Don't push your luck. Okay, on to... I think I'll go to the lounge first, just in case something is in the main hall that I need to... That's a giraffe! Hello? Okay. Wait. Second floor, third floor, on the right. This must be the room where the photograph was taken. Hey, psst, psst. Falcon, did you see that? Lounged olives. See what? The housemaid totally did something shifty. Shifty? I think she just pocketed something from that drawer. You should totally call her up on it. Call her out on it. Excuse me, mademoiselle. Ah, yes, yes. You two are policemen? No, we're private attorneys. My name is J.J. Falcon. And I'm Sverison. Oh, how rude of me. My name is Colleen. I'm not going to say the last name. <laughs> My name is Colleen. So, uh, what can I help you with, messieurs, with today? We're investigating the murders that took place last week. Do you mind if we ask a couple of questions? That's fine. Let me grab my chair. <laughs> I love that. That's better. Why do you want to ask? What is it you wanted to ask? Is this where the photograph... You already said that, though. We already knew this is where it happened. Mm. Just in case we only get one answer for her, I'm gonna go for this. Is there something we should know? Go open it again. You were a little nervous when we came in. Thought we were police officers. Is there something we ought to know? Anything you need to confess? No, no, no. I suppose I'm just a little nervous after the drama of last week. No. Yeah. I'm gonna pressure her. <laughs> Are you sure there isn't anything that you're hiding? It's okay to tell us. We're defense attorneys, meaning we help people get away with criminal acts. <laughs> okay, that's why, exactly why I didn't want to freaking represent the cat, but it's fine, whatever. <laughs> right, and, wait, what? No, no, that's not an accurate job description. It's frozen. Oh, it, it isn't? Oh, what do we do then? I'll tell you later. <laughs> mm-hmm. Honestly, Maziris, I have nothing to hide. There is something else you wanted to ask? Is this where the photograph was taken, even though we already knew what it was? We're looking for the room where the photograph was taken, prior to the incident. Would you happen to know where that, whether this is the right room? Oh yes, you're in the right place. I saw the photography session for, uh, for myself. That'd be so funny if she was in, like, in the picture and just, like, her head was cut off. <laughs> Let's see, the cameraman was standing, mm, just about where you two are standing, actually. The Monsieur Falcon. Oh, uh, Monsieur Falcon. This is where your camera was pointed? Right, and the clock above where the mantel place... Yeah, I said that right. <laughs> the Baron insisted on using that very location. Now that I'm looking at it, something isn't right about that clock. I know. The painting on it clashes with the door. <laughs> Decor. I was thinking among more obvious lines. 
The clock has no hands. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Oh, that clock never has had hands in all the years I've worked here. I think Baron just keeps it around as a con conversational piece. Well, we're conversing about it, so I guess it's working. It's a particular detail, though. I'll make note of it. Missing clock hands have been added to your evidence folder. I can hear the dog. Oh my god. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd want to ask? That's all. No further questions, thank you, mademoiselle. You've been a huge help. No problem, monsieurs. Actually, there is something. You two saw me stealing as you came in. I appreciate that you didn't give me a third degree about it. I did a little bit. I tried to pressure you, but you didn't put in. I'm gonna go get the dog. So, nobody at the door or anything, but he was looking at himself in the mirror and decided to bark at himself. I don't know what, he's like a child right now, like, the fact that he just keeps, like, staring at himself, he'll just stand there. I don't know how you don't know it's not you, it's very clearly you in the mirror. <laughs> he's just like, oh, it must be another dog, I guess, but, yeah, that, that happens a lot. Oh, well. Dog, and, dog is back in the lap. I know you two saw me stealing. Oh, yes. I, I did very much try to pressure you about that. You see, I'm trying to save up to follow my dreams, and well, well, never mind that. I'm rambling. You work in such a fancy place, I'd assume that you'd get paid well enough to follow your dreams. It's no problem, mademoiselle. To be honest, we have a much larger crime to worry about. Unless there's, I guess, I guess you'd still be getting paid crap. <laughs> oh, but this is back in the day, too. You're a woman. You're not probably getting paid very much. Although I should probably ask, I don't suppose you've been stealing anything else? Silverware, perhaps? A knife? <laughs> ah, yeah. you know about that? Yeah, I suppose that was me. Started with a couple of teaspoons. I didn't think the Baron would miss those. There was a girl on TikTok that she just had, like, a bunch of different spoons for different places. And honestly, I, as much as, like, I don't like people stealing from, like, the restaurants and stuff like that, I respect that she had, like, all these different kinds of spoons from other places, and it was actually pretty cool, just, like, looking at that. I'm, I'm very much of a spoon person. Uh, but, um, uh, well, yeah, I suppose that habit got a little away from me. That's one mystery solved, at least. Missing silverware has been added to your evidence folder. Haha. -ha. I don't take you to jail for that. <laughs> I would appreciate it if you didn't tell me the Baron. He's been really kind, and I would hate to break his trust. Uh, probably already broke it. I see. So where's the next big bird? To the main hall! Cups from restaurants. <laughs> How do you steal a cup from a restaurant, though? Like, I feel like you can get away, like, because mom has stole, like, little salsa bowls and stuff like that. But I feel like cups are a little bit harder to just be like, take and shove in your bag. Especially if you have like a small purse or something like that. I don't know, man. Especially since it's gonna be all wet too. Oh, I guess everything else would be wet. How do you steal a freaking cup? Have you stolen cups from a restaurant so far? <laughs> oh, I guess like, if it's kind of like a cool cup, I guess like I could see why you'd want that, but like, I don't know. I guess it depends on the cup. Did you see Masuras? Oh, did you Masuras have a good look around? I trust everything was in order. We had a good look. Thank you, Baron. But we actually have some questions for you. Please, ask away. I have nothing to hide. Uh, I don't want to ask about her. I guess. Whatever. Who met your housebane? Colleen. She's a courteous young lady, isn't she? Shh, I'm not gonna call her out. She's quite helpful. Yes, she was more than willing to help us out with our investigation. I'm glad to hear it. Did you two want to ask something else? What happened on the night of the murder? Baron Brigil, I'd like to ask you about your activities on the night of the murder. Ho oh, ho, am I in trouble? Not at all. I don't think so. 
No, no, nothing like that. We're just gathering the full picture. I see. Well, let me think. The guests arrive at five o'clock, and we all sat down for dinner in this very hall at six. That part went magnificently. The photographer arrived at seven o'clock, but it wasn't until 7.30 that we had our picture taken. It's okay, 7.30. Our housemaid discovered the crime scene soon after that. I see. Is there something else I can help you, Ms. Ezra? Can I evidence, like, this to you? Okay. I just guess I can't. Okay, I just don't think that's gonna work. I guess I'll be leaving. <laughs> I think that will be all, Baron. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. Have a delightful day, Messias. Can I ask him about the cigarette? Did you get all that information needed, Falcon? I hope so. Don't worry. If everything goes wrong in the trial, we could always just wing it. <laughs> no. <laughs> terrible. Just terrible. Let's head back to the office and get some rest. No, this is why I don't like you, Falcon. This is why Sparrowton's so much better. A new day. January 6th. Thursday. Ugh, there's another one. I don't think we'll see if he's back. Because this isn't going to take an entire day. Falcon, sh the trial day. Stop messing around. We need to head to the courthouse already. I was just... No, we're going to be late. Homie! <laughs> Last minute evidence, though. Okay, whatever. Cups, plates, <laughs> snatches, yes, both. How is you? I, I am okay. I, I'm tired. I actually spent a lot of last night just, like, studying and crap for, like, litigation stuff. And then I didn't end up going to sleep until, like, 4 a.m. But, oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> Falcon and Spiritan stand inside the marble portico in the Palais de Justice, is awaiting the opening of the trial. Tribunal de Grand Intents. Don't expect me to know anything about Sierra Jade. That I, I was not. I wouldn't say that I'm a horrible student. I'm just a horrible retainer of information. Are you nervous, Falcon? Um, kind of. A little bit. Not gonna lie. Of course I'm nervous. We're woefully unprepared for this case. Yes, especially since we didn't get the freaking... Whatever it's called. The pictures. Two days. We only had two days to prepare. How are we expected to get anything done in that time frame? Calm your feathers, Falcon. We could do this. Can we? Uh... <laughs> I'll try my best. Monsieur Falcon. Petit Sperrison. Is there anything you need me to do to you? A little bit. No, no. We've got to handle all things. Falcon was just telling me how confident he was about feeling about this case. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's wonderful. I just know you two can pull... Ooh, we'll pull through. I thought she said wing it too for a second, but... Let's move it along, fellows. Quack. Ah, oh, yes. I'll be waiting from the inside. Do your best, Monsieur Falcon. We will. Mm, will we, though? Are we ready? No. Yeah, we're ready. You just said five seconds ago you weren't ready. What do you mean? <laughs> Hello, Judge. All right, settle down on everybody. Psh, 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 psh. <laughs> I don't have a gavel. Uh, settle down. Is everybody here? J.J. Falcon, present. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, Rupert Rubikizun presents. It is ready to your... Eh, the ready is prosecution, Your Honor. I don't know what voice to give you, but... Okay. I was about to say, well, I'll root for you since you're another buddy, but I guess we're against you, so... Prepare to die, I guess. Uh, oh, darn. That's not it. Oh, gosh. Where are my nits? Haha, <laughs> I knew it. Knew what? Rupert and I went to Paris law, law School together. He was in all my classes. Oh, was he smart? Pfft, no, he always scored the second worst marks in class. Dang. I could only assume that he bumbled through his final exams and the look of his two rabbit's feet. Is the music too loud? Or it's quiet? I'll turn it up a little bit. Unless you improved considerably, you might already have the trial in the bag. Bro, that's gonna be me in the future. <laughs> just learn everything in school, then just immediately forget it. That's good to know. But say, Spiritan, if Rupert scored the second lowest marks in the class, then who scored the lowest? You. I choose to exercise my right 
<laughs> to not self-incriminate. Mm hmm Okay. Ah, here it is. <clears throat> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Are the jury... Is the jury... Are the jury all present? <gasps> That's a hit, though. <laughs> all present. The counted four, Your Honor. Hey, Belkin. I thought there were only six members of the jury for cases like this. Why do I count? Eight. Oh, those two birds with funny hats are... Assures, the associate judges. I thought there were supposed to be 12 people. Everything seems to be in order, so let's begin. The court is now in session for the trial of Dame Clareton. <laughs> gavel, gavel. Prosecution, please call your first witness to the stand. Oh, uh, oh gosh. Uh, uh, are we already? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I choose to call the officer through the charge of the murder investigation. Inspector Vittori. To the witness stand. I don't know what freaking voice to give him. <laughs> what, what is even the voice that I'm trying? Inspector Venturi, please approach the stand and recite the oath. I don't know why I'm so normal for that judge. As you will, Your Honor. I swear to speak without hatred. I said that right, yeah. <laughs> and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Monsieur, uh, no, um, Inspector, please state your uh, name and occupation for the record. My name is Inspector... Justi Venturi. Volturi. I'm a servant to the law. A scourge of the gutter that rats the plague of the city. I have enforced the law for over 20 years and I shall continue until I bring the infamous killer to justice. Our path begins 18 years ago. Oh, you have an eye patch. Let's stick to the questions, Inspector. Of course, Your Honor. Oh great, I was hoping we could have one of those bumbling, cluddly officers, but instead we're stuck with the lawfully good goody two-shoes. I bet this guy would turn into his own mother if he saw her littering. So, uh, yes, Inspector, is it true that you are uh, le le the lead investigator on this case? That is correct. I was also among the first to arrive at the scene of the crime. Then perhaps you could walk us through what you witnessed upon your arrival? Absolutely. Just after 7.30. Okay. So 7.30 was when they did the picture. We were all alerted and brought to the scene by the house made of Burton. Okay. At the scene of the crime, we found Deme Clareton. She was standing over the corpse of the Monsieur Gwena Grunui <laughs> with his blood all over her paws. So she had it on her freaking paws? Girl! <laughs> Don't you know not to touch the body? You're saying very guilty right now. Uh, well, that sounds like an open and shut in case by my humble opinion, but uh, no more questions, Your Honor. B b bloody pause? Nobody told me about that detail. Exactly! What do you mean? <laughs> Keep it together, Falcon. You're about to be given the opportunity to cross examine the witness. That's your opportunity to find the flaws in the inspector's testimony. I would like to have known. I just realized that they have actual hands. I don't like that. <laughs> But yeah, I would have liked to freaking know ahead of time that she had the bloody paws. Of course, I know this. You may begin your cross-examination, Ms. Zimmer Falcon. <laughs> Rip English. Nervous. Little piglet. Cross-examination of the witness to find flaws in this testimony. Select a key's phrase that you find suspicious, and the Falcon will press the witness for the information. Ask the right questions to bring the truth to the light. Avoiding pressing for pointless details, and the judge and jury do not like having their name, their time wasted. Select a statement to the question. Okay. At the scene of the crime, the family demonstration, she's staring at this. Okay. Yeah, that housemaid was there at the time of the picture. She saw it, so she shouldn't have been able to see it, I guess. Inspector, you said they were alerted by the scene by Baron Ruggiero's housemaid. That is correct. Could she have been the murderer? No. I don't think it was her. Could the housewife have been the murderer? Um, no, I, I object. Falcon, you cannot go around accusing people of murder. <laughs> I must agree. No one has heard Nothing that made suspect the motive. Falcon, do you have any reason that the housemaid was a murderer? I do. She was stealing. She was stealing the silverware. 
I do, you see, the housemaid may have, uh, well... No, you're just suspecting Dutch. No, wait, I have evidence! <laughs> They're stalling. What a buffoon. No, what? Do you have another question about the housemaid? I don't need to know her freaking- oh. I don't need to know her name. Let's see. Let's see in the crying thunder. Oh, the sliced open corpse. The monster. Can I know what they used, I guess, to slice it open? Because she didn't have silverware. Go on. Um, sliced open. I'm afraid that they're not gonna let me know. Tell me about the slash. Inspector, could you describe the cut on Monsieur's Gwenbert's corpse? Certainly. It was a single vertical slash. It was a fine, deep cut. Sort of like what you'd expect from a sharpen sharpened saber a ser or a servant's knife. Or a cat's claw? Certainly. No! That's what I was hoping. <laughs> I don't think a cat's claw would have done that. You know what, though? A falcon's claw could do that. Freaking falcons can rip out your... I think it's your spine. Like, your spinal cord. Like, the really big falcons. They could just gut you right up. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> Fun in quotation marks. Wait, wait, wait. You say a saber or a knife could have inflicted the wound? Isn't this a line of investigation worth pursuing? Don't be a draft, Falcon. Did you see or hear anything about a knife or sword at the crime scene? No, because... <sighs> no. Well, I did not, but is it a possibility? Is it not? Without um, evidence, it's pretty unlikely a possibility. Let's stick with the facts. Do you have another question about the corpse of the Monsieur Guinery? <sighs> I guess. No, because a cause of the death is just a slash. We don't know what the cause of death was. And I feel like they're just gonna be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I might as well. Ask it though. Monsieur, what was the cause of death? It was immediately obvious as I arrived at the scene. Monsieur Grenier had a great slash from shoulder to thigh. Shoulder to thigh? Dude, that cut was so small though. The blood was everywhere. I spoke to the coroner. He said it was an egregious. The frog died from blood loss directly caused by the open wound. I see. I suppose there's no chance of arguing at this point, which is unrelated to dirty, huh? Do you have another question about the corpse? No. Dang it. Inspector, you say Deme had blood on her paws. <gasps> From the meat! She was eating meat because she didn't have silverware. That's correct. <laughs> I thought the picture was at 8. I don't know, man. No, I'm pretty sure the picture was at 7.30. And then that's when they said, like, they took it. I don't know. I think they, like, traveled out at 8, like, afterwards. Correct. Blood clung to her for, like, a guilt to a convict. Whose blood is it? How much blood is there? No, just whose blood is it? Because you probably don't know. Ha! What a question. It was Monsieur But you don't know that. <laughs> ah, I eject. The line of questioning is absurd. No, it's not! She had freaking me! There was only one murder victim at the night of the Falcon. The blood on Deme Clareton's paws could have only belonged to one person. No! Judge, judge, Falcon is trying to delay the trial by asking pointless questions. I am not... Do you have any reason to suspect blood belongs to something else? Yes, I do. I do. I do. Please let me. <laughs> Actually, I have more than suspicious. I have evidence that the blood on Dame Claritin's paws had nothing to do with the murder. This is foolish time-wasting, Falcon. If the blood on Dame Claritin's paws didn't come from the victim, where did the blood come from? The meat! On the evening of the murder, Dame Claritin ate a bloody rare steak. With no fork or anything. Is it true, Monsieur Repetin? Uh, well, I am, um, in the manner of speaking, I, um, I suppose the steak may have been, um, um, on the menu. Then, Inspector, would you acknowledge the possibility that the blood on the lady's paws did not belong to the victim, but to the steak? Well. Wait, uh, don't answer that, Inspector. It, it's a possibility. No! Gasp. Pretty convincing. 
You gained a little favor at the jury. I've already lost favor, though, so even that, I guess. So, Inspector Volturi, is it possible that you arrested an innocent bystander simply for being a little bit of a messy eater? Now hold on just for one minute, Falcon. You're overlooking something quite crucial. Demi Claritin is in the elegant bourgeoisie kitchen. Kitten. <laughs> she is no doubt brought up with flawless etiquette and um, perfect table manners. At the banquet, she would have eaten the steak with a fork in her left hand and the knife on the right, like any proper civilized animal, but she didn't. <laughs> How could she have possibly gotten blood in her paws with such good manners? Because the freaking giraffe stole the silverware, just the whole thing. Oh, that's a good question. Or at least it would be at any ordinary dinner banquet. But as it happens, something was missing from that particular banquet. Something that forced Dumb Claire to eat with her paws. Oh... Yes. To make Clareton was forced to eat steak with her steak with her paws because the silver of the household has been previously stolen. I wonder by who. Whoa. <laughs> we weren't aware of anything missing from the Rukur residence when we performed the initial investigation. But as it happened, Baron approached us about this very subject last night. Ah. Innocent, perhaps? What a twist. You gained a little favor with the jury. Yes! I'm up one now. What is the meaning of all this? Bloody steak? Misplaced silverware? Inspector, what was your infection so lax that you overlooked these basic facts in your initial report? I don't think those are very basic facts, but that's fine. The police was called at 7.15. Were they called at 7.15? Why were the police called at 7.15? We didn't even find out about the murder until, like, 8, I think. What the heck? <laughs> Lax, my investigation? Judge, I assure you that I'm the most thorough investigative officer in the force. And it's amazing that the person in police managed to solve any crimes at all. I could be wrong about that, but like, I, I, I like could have swear. I think like 730 was like the one detail that I, for some reason, like held on to. But I don't know. You're, you're probably right, but I don't know. <laughs> then it's amazing that the... Paris and police managed to solve any crimes at all. Isn't it sucky that I really want to be an investigator, but I just can't hold on to freaking evidence? <laughs> oh dear. Be on your way, Inspector. Perhaps do a little inspecting for your next, next case. Yes! We get an extension! Fine, so be it. Once yours, until next time. Prosecutor, I trust your next witness is ready? Yes, of course, Your Honor. I call upon, let's see, uh, Monsieur Roberto. Uh, the ph photographer who attended the banquet in the night of the murder. And I didn't break into your house, so whatever evidence you have is fine. Monsieur Roberto, Robertito, please approach the stand and recite the oath. Are you the photographer? I thought it was a bug that was, like, in the camera. Not a penguin. How, how does it go? I swear we speak without hatred, without fear, to tell one's whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's a little cliche, to be perfectly honest. Could be, uh, the witness. Please introduce for the, uh, uh court record. Dude, this song goes hard. <laughs> Memory might be whack. Yeah, dude, for real. Mine is too. That's okay. Hmm. As if anybody in this courtroom does not immediately recognize me. I don't. I am the great Monsieur Rabatito Rabinero, cutting edge photographer and visionary. Is music too loud, by the way? It's like loud in my ear. I like turned it up, but I don't know if it's too loud. Oh. Uh, I'll turn it down slightly. <laughs> I didn't just take people's pictures, I capture their very essence. Je suis le tu es un pepe. You may have seen my words in the hit magazines La Branche or Cité Chute. I can send your twists if you like. What on earth? What on earth is a tweet? Bird to bird communication. Come on, Falcon. It's the 19th century. Get with the times already. Yes, yes. Your works are very um impressive, Monsieur Robert Robinero. 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 What? Robin. Robinero. Robinero. I'm not gonna say that right. Let's get down to business. Could you please tell us your um, activities that were on the night of the murder? Very well. I was hired by Baron to capture the evening's events. I arrived at the seven in the morning. I pointed my camera and captured the beauty 
Okay, so it's seven. I put in and captured my, the beauty of the banquet and one fantastic photograph. Then I build Baron and left. Like a true artist. <laughs> and um, with regard to the photographs itself, who did you photograph? I thought you might. I brought a copy so you could all see for yourselves. Oh, very good. And we don't have a freaking clock though to know the time. That sucks because it's gone. The minute hands are gone. Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. That would have probably helped. <gasps> we do have hands. What the heck? Oh, okay. <laughs> you lied to me. You said that you didn't see anything. Whatever. <laughs> Also, your head's not cut off. My word, this is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So let's see, who do we have here? In the middle, we have uh, Baron, the lion who hosts the event. On the left, we have um, Seigneur Prutu, father of the defendant, Dame Clarity. Oh! Wait, father? I thought that was the dad for some reason. I don't know why, but that makes more sense. And finally, we see the uh, uh, house maid, Clo Colleen, who I suspect may have snuck into the picture uninvited. It's not the only thing that she's done. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The first is the victim, Grunery. The second is the defendant, Carl Cataline. Th Quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> the hands! Just a moment, Monsieur. This Rabbiton, this proves nothing. So the defendant and the victim were not photographed with the others. That doesn't mean that they were in the garden together at that point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. The pro the prosecution may continue. I think that's the giraffe lady now. <laughs> You're so suspicious. Behind the photo photograph subjects, we see a wall clock with time and uh, 7.30. So it was 7.30. Now, why is this time significant? Well, the inspector Volturi told us earlier that the exact time that the murder took place. Okay. So it was. But then you said that... <sighs> no, I guess that makes sense. She could have still... I guess, yeah. I was I was thinking, like, how would have the person alerted everybody if she's at the camera place? But, you know, I, I, that makes sense that she could have gone a little bit later, and then that's when... I think they found the body at, like, 8 or something, right? Do you see Falcon? Every suspect has an alibi at the time of the murder, save for Dame Clariton herself. Fal something is fishy. In the jail cell, Dame Clariton told us that she was present when the photograph took place, but I don't see her in Robonito's photograph. That's true. But I can't use Dame Clariton's testimony as evidence. It's, it has too, too little weight. Uh, if you want to prove that Monsieur Robonito's photograph is not valid piece of evidence, I will have to dish out evidence of my own. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well. Defendant, the defense may proceed. Hm, <laughs> what a waste of time if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. Cross-examination. Okay. Uh, I arrived at 7, set up my camera, captured the beauty of the evening, and went from the photograph... And I build. Here's the thing. I'm going to choose this and hope that we can bring up the time clock. Monsieur, you said that you arrived at 7 o'clock. Give or take a couple minutes, yes. Yeah, I guess how did you know? <laughs> well, how did you know that you arrived at 7? Well, the clock at my house read 6.45 when I left. And the walk to Chateau was around 15 minutes. I don't claim to be a flawless time keeper, but I am a professional, and I always stick to an appointment. Do you have another question about... Uh, yeah... How long did it take to set up? How long did it take to set up your camera? It took perhaps 25 minutes to find a soothing location, put it together in the camera, and ready to film the film. So you arrived at 7, the photograph has taken place at 7.30, and you spent 25 minutes seven, setting up. That leaves 5 minutes unkept for. Falcon, you surely are suggesting that Monsieur Robinito did something um, nefarious at this small window of time. I am. Um, well... Not necessarily. No, I'm not at all. I'm just trying to piece together everything's evenings. Hmm. I spent a little time walking with Baron when I arrived. That's probably where the rest of the time went. Do you have another question for... No, not necessarily. 
One minute. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll ask about the photograph. She was supposed to be in there. Let's take a look, closer look at this photograph. I know 7.30 was in the picture, but there was not supposed to be any hands there. I mean, I know that 7.30 was supposed to be the time anyways. Why is it in black and white? I see a mistake in the photograph. Just to clarify, Monsieur. <gasps> Did, was it tampered with? Was it like photoshopped? Oh, is that why? You needed to like have it like, um, developed because I'm pretty sure they said that it was like drawn, like a drawn photo. That's how she described it. Yeah, it needed to be developed. Like, I feel like maybe you probably tweaked it there. Just to, just to, just to clarify, Monsieur Robinita, the photographs are a direct reflection of reality, are they not? That's correct. The photographic pr process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. That is most curious, because I see a mistake. A mistake? Impossible. I just told you, Monsieur. The camera is perfect. Unbiased of a device. The photograph is produces... <laughs> Flawless. Falcon, <laughs> I'm not seeing um, any mistakes. Perhaps you can be more specific? Certainly. Look on the arrow. Right. Yeah, freaking thing. <laughs> the clock in this photograph. There's something not right about it. Hmm. Well, isn't that convenient? The defense sees something wrong with the uh, key piece of evidence that implicates his client. Mm, that is a key piece of evidence. It would be a shame that if it was wrong. Don't give me that cocky tone, Monsieur Rebutin. I have the evidence there is something wrong with the clock in that picture. Um, no hands. The photograph clearly shows the clock's hands is pointing at seven and six. That much is self-evident. Which is most curious because the clock at the lounge of the chateau has no hands. It, it has no hands? The clock is merely a decorative piece, a talking item. Feel free to ask Bertin or his housemate if you have any doubts. Monsieur Rapinino, how do you explain this discrepancy? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. There must have been some sort of mistake. My camera is flawless. No, there is no mistake, Monsieur. Your pho photograph depicts something that does not exist in the real world. M maybe there is an error in the printing process? An error precisely is where the clock's hand should be? Please, Monsieur, don't patronize us. Allow me to offer a more plausible explanation. You, Monsieur, edited this photograph. E edited? I'm no expert, but I suspect that you used paint or ink to carefully put the hands at the clock. It would have been a simple task, considering that your clock was face bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include the handled, handless clock in the photograph just to simplify the editing process. Mm-hmm. I, I, Falcon, your reasoning is absurd. Is it, though? <laughs> Why would the witness do such a thing? Because they killed. Is it not obvious? By showing the photograph is taken at the place... place precisely 7.30, it clears all the f photograph su subjects of suspicion. In other words, Monsieur Rabanino created a perfect alibi. <gasps> Is he in cahoots with the giraffe lady? Talk, man. <laughs> of course. It raises further questions. Who is the witness protecting the giraffe? And why? Why was Monsieur Rabanino coerced, bribed, threatened? Is her dream maybe... Like photography, starting a family with him. <laughs> Enough silence. Let's hear some answers, Monsieur Robinito. Fine, you've got me. I'm guilty. I did it all. You did it. You're confessing to the murderer of Monsieur Grony. What? No, 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 no. I have no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting that I am guilty of producing fraudulent photographs. I was ordered to make changes to the printed photographs, and yes, that included adding hands to the clock. You were ordered by whom? I dare not say. Monsieur Robinito, I strongly advise you to answer all the defense's questions. You have pledged to stake without fear, after all. Speak. <laughs> I just can't read. With respect, Judge, I fear his claws more than I fear the punishment for the justice system. I shall name no names. Okay, claws, you obviously just... Why would the lion... That's his business partner, maybe... Maybe, because of the partnership. No, that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> I was like, the way businesses are in, if the partnership, you don't have to, like, pay certain taxes. If it's, like, a company, so maybe, like, with three, you need to get rid of one to make it taxless. I don't know. His claws. Do you hear that, Falcon? That's most unfortunate. 
Monsieur Robinito, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We do not live under ancient regime, after all. But since you have admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You shall not be charged with perjury to this course. Oh, you shall be charged with perjury to this course. As you should. I can't protest. This is the least I deserve from my failure as an artist. Good day, monsieurs. <laughs> Guess. <laughs> Pretty convincing. Yes. Is this an otter? That's so cute. I can't actually tell if it's an otter, though. So, uh, the cloth's hands were printed on. So what? That doesn't matter. It matters so much. What do you mean? The fur... Photograph still depicts Nemai Clariton as accident, close to the time of the murder. That's significant. Can we have the rest of the frickin' photos? Don't be dead, Monsieur Robertin. If the photograph is clearly not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered reliable evidence. Got you! <laughs> Why not? It's still a betrayal of the uh, night's events. Not early. Because if we couldn't accept that one part of the picture was edited, then we must accept the possibility that other parts were too. It is possible that Dame Clareton was painted out. Even worse, it was possible that another person was painted in. Mmm, she was painted over. That's why she looked like she wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> Did she, like... I think. Because, like, she had to, like, sit down just to get to, like, somewhat our level and she was still higher. So I think maybe she's, like, smaller in the photo. Like, the giraffe lady. We know that the witness is trying to cover for someone, so all the possibilities must be accounted for. So what are you saying, Falcon? That the housemaid paid off the photographer? Or was it Senior perhaps? I don't even remember who this was. Oh, her dad. I don't think so. The housemaid lacks a means or motive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't make sense for the senior, for the dad to implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron deliberately tried to frame Dame Clareton? Because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. The Baron is a pillar of our community. He would never do such a thing. Okay, stop being such a suck-up. <laughs> Monsieur Rabbiton, I'm not sh here to throw accusations. It's the job of you, the persecutor, however. Mayhaps I should offer my opinion. <gasps> the Baron. <laughs> Baron, it's not a uh, time for your witness testimony yet. I think it's a good time. So we'd like to thank prosecutor, but and yet I see a good reputation getting tarnished for your incompetence. I I incompetence? Indeed. Let us proceed with the witness questioning. It is... Is that fine with you, Judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good. And I trust that the defense has no objections? Of course not. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc., etc., no prosecutor, asking me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Uh, uh okay, Barrington. Um, uh, on the night, uh, uh, the, um, the initial dinner, the initial dinner went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Guinemi left to visit the garden. Demi Clareton followed behind him moments later. The dad <laughs> and myself were engaged in conversation, so he paid her no mind. After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to find Monsieur Gunbury and Dame Clareton. That would be when I heard the cry for her help. Thank you, Bariton. I think we all know the story from there. I would like to cross-examine the witness. Do you doubt my integrity? Yes, we had a freaking cigarette there. I'm just here to uncover the truth, Bariton. Very well then. Hit me with your best shot. Let's establish the absolute certainty that I, Bariton, am the most honest man. The defense may proceed with cross-examination. Here are cigars. Um, uh, let's see. Garden. Burton, we saw the murder scene. Your garden for ourselves. Uh, the horses weren't really that bad. Burton, when is the last time you ventured to your own garden? As it happens, I quite serious, have quite serious allergies. I haven't been in my own garden for years. Oh, what a liar. <laughs> Yours, you say? Indeed. That's not right. Burton, I do not wish to call you a liar, but that claim does not hold up to scrutiny. Oh, and why is that? Because we have hard evidence that you visited the garden recently. Balderdash, my word is gold. Sh show the court this so-called hard evidence that you've been in my garden. Ha ha ha. This was found in your garden, to be specific. It was found inside the fountain basin. 
right beside where the murder occurred. A cigar butt, but uh, that, that couldn't only belong to uh, anybody. And the prosecutor, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. Uh, okay, sorry, Belton. <laughs> that man is giving me such like <laughs> anime. Ooh, oh, excuse me. Oh, I should have done an ooh voice for him. Although no, 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 no that's probably not gonna be good on my part. But oh my god, the missed opportunity. I'll do it later. That is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars, but I must apologize, Monsieur Falcon, for I must understood your initial question. You see, prior to the banquet, I hadn't visited my own garden in years, but naturally, after hearing the housemaid's cry for help on the evening of the murder, I rushed outside. Mmm, so convenient. <laughs> I was shocked and disgusted by what I saw, and that must have been when I dropped my half-smoked cigar in the fountain basin. Would you really smoke inside? Yes, he would. He literally... I forgot. He threw cigarettes in our face. You see, Falcon, there's perfectly reasonable explanation. I would find that believable if the cigar was casually discarded. But it happened that the cigar butt was found in the fountain's upper basin, a location that could only be possibly accessed without, with great inconvenience. And a little paddling. <laughs> the cigar butt was not chopped. It was deliberately hidden. There are any number of possible explanations. Are there? Because I can only think of one. And that is, that you, Baron, deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities. Did I know? And what illicit activities would those be? You want to spill it out for you? Fine. Let's put everything on the table. You, Baron, murdered Monsieur Guanabel. That is what you were trying to keep hidden. Directly accusing me of a murder? How shamelessly brazen. That... I can't do the uwu voice. I don't even know what the uwu voice would be. That is ludicrous. No, no, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> that is a ludicrous accusation, Falcon. The Baron is an outstanding citizen of the highest honor. Order. Your allegation is baseless. You have no evidence. Uh, n no means, motive, or opportunity. No evidence? Think harder, Monsieur Reberton. Every piece of evidence points to Baron Brugul as this prime specific. You know what that means? The Baron certainly has the means. His line claws are as sharp as a surgeon's blade. Gutting a frog would, gutting a frog belly would be n trivial to him. Even Monsieur Rabinino confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws. Ridiculous! I would never threaten a man with violence. You want a motive? The Baron had at least ten thousand francs worth of motive. By removing a business partner, the Baron's share of the railway company increased to one third of one half. That is preposterous, as I knew it. <laughs> kind of, I said taxes, but whatever. And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No, he crafted the perfect opportunity. He arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests. He was aware of the missing silverware, and yet he s served steak, a food item that necessitates good cutlery. Why? To the bloody hands of the guest, of course. Then, he hired an easy influenced photographer and staged a very specific picture in order to build a perfect alibi for himself. Photographing, uh, photographing the guests in front of the handless clock to make for easy editing is quite an ingenious plan, as it must be said. Prosecutor, are you just going to let this slanderous yarn go un uncontested? Say something. Object! I, uh, um, oh, you're pitifully useless. What is that? Oh, after ex executing the murder, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminally evidence, his f finished scar. He knew that leaving it at the crime scene would raise suspicion, but he didn't have time to properly dispose of it. So, out of desperation, he threw it into the fountain. Out of sight, out of mind, of his guests of any snooping police. I imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Senor <laughs> Dad, since that would ensure total control over the railway company. Alas, Darme, Darme Claritin and the first was the first to happen upon the crime scene. So the Baron improvised. This is an outrage, Judge. I demand that you disbar this ranting lunatic. Why would you? <laughs> oh, you cannot just disbar me for that. No, there is only one outrage here. That is, a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl for murder. You're a bourgeoisie of the worst kind. How dare you, Grissian? The utter nerve for you lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist like myself for something so heinous. I'm not so- eh, I'm nothing like the fat cat bourgeoisie. I'm a respectable, hard-working capitalist. 
No, you're a ruthless man who would slaughter the dear friend just to reap a few Francis. You incredulous whelp. I ought to gut you right here and now, just like, like, like the damn frog. <gasps> and it all comes out. <laughs> this is so intense. <laughs> For no reason. Awkward silence. <laughs> could, could someone please restrain the Baron? I'm on it, Johanna. Let's go, old man. To the gongery with you. Don't touch me, filthy Jacques de Wall. I can walk myself. That's quite the turn of events. Does the prosecution have anything to add? I, well, um, in a matter of seeking, um, well, to be honest, um, no. Then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the animals of this court please be patient at this time. Falcon, that was pretty incredible. Thank you. I just hope it was enough. But I was, yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> you just proved the Clarington's innocence. We'll get a not guilty verdict for sure. Hmm. Spiritan, I think you've misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's that? Innocent and proved until proven guilty. She's not proven guilty, though. I haven't proved anything. As lawyers, we could not deal in proofs. It's just not possible. But you... Uh, it's kind of... No, you, you proved it. What do you mean? You proved that he's guilty. She... There's no beyond reason of doubt that she, beyond a reasonable doubt that she like did anything. So I don't, I don't see why we got, you know, silverware, everything lined up, but he, if the glove does not fit, you cannot acquit. <laughs> Clearly she didn't do it. What do you mean? <laughs> Actually, huh, her cause, I guess that would be fine for, the glove does seem to fit. That's still not the point. All we can do is organize the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> it was a murder. Yes. I haven't proved the Dame Claritin's innocence. All I've done is demonstrate that there is significant possibility that he is not guilty. I'm not sure I could understand the difference. We've received... We've reached a decision. In light of recent relevations, it's clear that an error in judgment was made with the initial arrest. Yes. On that note, we unanimously find the defendant, Dame Claritin Dismu, to be not guilty. Pa pa. Gavel gavel. Not guilty. Monsieur Falcon, Petit Spiritin, you did it. Yeah, I suppose we did, didn't we? We should head back off to the office. We can celebrate properly. You were just so uncelebratorial, though. You were, like, so unconfident. What do you mean? <laughs> you did it, Falcon. I can't take all the credit. It was a group achievement. I'm so proud of you both. I'll go get one bottle of wine and three of our least dirty glasses, thanks. <laughs> or you could just clean them, you know. This is fine. You're amazing, once you had Falcon. Aw, oh, it was nothing. I very much liked the way you pinned the murder on the Baron. That was an act of sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything. Spiritan and I just worked on unveiling the truth, given the facts of the case. Monsieur Feltham, there is no need to play coy. The case is over. Is it, though? Play coy? Don't tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm completely lost. Oh, well. I thought you were goody-goody. Thing was an act, but you actually don't know. All right, I'll spell it out for you. <gasps> Cutscene. Look at her dogs. <laughs> I met her. <gasps> what do you mean? I knew not to trust you. Homie. I saw him in the garden, all drunk, vulnerable, and I seized my opportunity. Homie. It was nothing personal, but just business. You don't understand? Bro. I knew not to trust you. <laughs> business? To increase my papa's share in the train company, of course. My papa always said that the drunk old frog was the weakest link. Then why would he admit to the thing? Unless you guys were gonna get married or something, or... Your confession doesn't make any sense at all. I found Baron Rizzuto's cigar, but I'm sure you probably had it. Cats don't like water, though. I guess he's a cat, too, so... But... Sacrifices need to be made. Oh, I put that there. I expected the police to find it, but I suppose I was putting too much faith in the brains of the Paris finest. 
But Falcon proved that the Monsieur Robinson's photograph has been edited, probably by her. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was busy playing a visit to Monsieur Guinry in the garden. My papa knew I needed an ally, so he ordered Monsieur Robertou to paint me over the Baron. To paint me over Baron and to add hands under the cloth. But you weren't even in the picture. But that lazy artist didn't manage to finish it. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was imaginative because that could have gone so very badly. What's with the silence? You should both be proud. There aren't many lawyers in this whole France who could have won a case like this, even for a bourgeoisie kitty like me. I'm so mad. <laughs> I think you should leave. <laughs> Fine, so much for the celebrations. Here's the payment for your services, straight from my papa's pockets. Well, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Adieu, Petit Spiritin. How much did we get? Okay, so we had 20, so 60. Oh, okay, we got paid 40. That's That's pretty good. I mean, I'm still mad, but... <laughs> Falcon, what do we do now? Falcon? Bro... Bro... Should we continue this, or should we... Wait until next episode to finish? Should we make it a two-parter? It's only been, like, 15 minutes. It's up to you guys. <laughs> like OJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. There's no yay moments to this. We freaking... <sighs> I'm so mad. <laughs> she swindled us. I knew I knew we shouldn't have trusted her. I said no at first. I was right. I, I would just like to point that out. But in the beginning of my heart of hearts, I was correct. <laughs> my intuition. I might not have played that perfectly. But I feel like I played that decently well. <laughs> but yes. I don't know. I don't know either. What do you want to do? I guess we can leave. I think, I think there's two acts. So I guess I could leave it until next time and then we can pick it up then. Oh wait, it's not too long. But yeah, so I will end it there. That was a good gameplay. I'm actually, that, honestly, that was so hype. Like, it, it was at the top of my game list and there's a good reason for that. That was, that was amazing. <laughs> still pissed but <laughs> yeah I'm I'm just it it's good I don't know what we're gonna do from here though because like double jeopardy you can't like try her twice but I don't know man like because she can we can convict her of something else I suppose but we can't convict her of the murder exactly we could still prove that he's innocent, though, because even though you're in jail, you could still be um, given another chance to, like, have a trial for that. Since you're um, detained and you lost, like, you know, liberty, you have a chance to still defend yourself. But I, I don't know what to do about the girl, man. <laughs> also, he freaking confessed. He said he murdered her. I just, I don't understand why he confessed. Oh. <laughs> On Dragon Ball Z, yes. Next time. We shall go and go and continue act two, see what the end of this is. But other than that, I hope you guys had a great time. I am apologize about my horrible French, but thank you for being here again. Nick's my freaking the best of my fans. <laughs> and Emily, thank you for dropping by as well. Preach preach to you both. <laughs> but yes, I will go ahead and end stream. Hope you guys had a great I was going to say, hope you guys had a great day. <laughs> hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And 